The buck's a good looking deer. He's just too young. He's too young. He'll still be here when he grows up. He'll still be here when he grows up. Now, I may not be here when he grows up. <laughs> mule deer hunting in central Montana and the mule deer property that we're actually hunting is a pretty fascinating experience, not only because of the diversity of the terrain, but the quality of deer that we have running around the hillsides. Posing for or something. Yeah. Hey, you guys want to be on TV? <laughs> yeah? I <laughs> do. <laughs> The potential for a good one is definitely here, and it's got me very, very excited. If that didn't turn your crank and make you want to come to Montana, you better just stick with football. The state of Montana, larger than many nations, with some of the most magnificent peaks, lakes and rivers, broad plains, and greatest abundance of wildlife on Earth. From unsurpassed fishing to upland birds and 10 species of huntable big game, including outstanding mule deer. We're hunting in what I believe to be one of God's absolute wonderland. It's unique, it's one of a kind, nothing like it anywhere else in the West. We've really strived to limit our harvest on this property and, and get some age on our bucks. They get a chance to grow up out here. Yeah. I'm an old, old mule deer hunter from way back. I, I love to hunt muleys. I've only killed one whitetail in my whole life. He hit him. He's going down. He's down. down. Oh, Outstanding. Right. <laughs> and I, I loved that experience. It was just great. You know, it had me thinking about becoming a whitetail hunter, but uh, still deep, deep down in my heart, I'm a muley guy. I've, I've got my share of those, and they just turned my crank. Well, it's the night before our first, first day, so we might as well uh, see if we can't put a couple on paper out there. Make sure the gun's still doing what it was doing before I left home. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Make sure you can do what you say you can do. Oh, <laughs> don't be doing that to me. <laughs> okay, Vanny, got fire in the hole. Let her loose. Looks good, Daryl. Looking really good. Cool. Made me a believer. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I love to hunt mule deer all my life. Something about them is just flat special. This country's called the Breaks of the Missouri River. And at first glance, you could think it should be the bad breaks. But in the outcrops, bluffs, and grassy plains, hunters actually find an ideal habitat for the most iconic big game of the West, the mule deer. Take a look at him there, Daryl. He's, he's a nice buck. He's pretty He's, out, he's yeah. looking right at us, is he? Those big twos are kind of cool. Three on the left. Not as heavy as I thought. Yeah. I just never get tired of looking at mealy bugs. You know what? It's a lot of fun. It is. Oh, I just top on the left. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's just good. That's his best asset. He's got more important stuff on his mind than staying alive. Yeah. Come back here. You're wearing pretty neat perfume. I like your smell. Give him another year. Yeah. It's amazing. When they get to that point, what two more years do? They just turn into a whopper. Yeah. The mule deer has always been an astounding trophy. Its antlers possibly second only to the elks in the Rocky Mountain domain. Less abundant than 50 years ago, it's grown that much smarter and harder to hunt. The mule deer today, I believe that they're probably the toughest trophy we have in North America to, to really come up with a dandy. They are not or lack of intelligence at all. And they like to stay up high and so that they can see. They use, utilize all their senses to, to avoid predators. Kind of a pretty amazing animal. Oh, man. Gotta be to stay alive. Stay alive. They're kind of low on the food chain. Yep. And high on our list. High on our list for the next couple of days. <laughs> man, there must be a million nooks and crannies out here. Yeah. You can see why a deer can get some age. Yep. A lot of hiding places. People think when they just look that I can see everything. You can't see anything. No. <laughs> you really have to study with glass. Yep. Optics while hunting mule deer are crucial. You will walk into one of these draws and glass and glass and glass and don't see anything, but then you just sit still and just wait. Wait. I mean, there's too many acres right here to take it lightly. Yeah. 
I spent many, many hours in those weaver binoculars. And I'll tell you what, when you're searching through sagebrush, which is all kind of the same, you can really come up with a serious case of eye fatigue easily with poor glass. And uh, I thought they were great. Here's one, nice buck, nice buck. Trotting across that flat right over there. Yeah. Good buck. Yeah. There's that white face, I love that white face. He's only about 17, 18 inches, not even 17, 18 inches wide. If he had uh, a little more mass, a little more width, we'd be going after that guy. Oh, that's a nice buck. That's a pretty buck. About three year a typical old. three, four year old buck, Daryl, I think, you know, that's type of deer that we try and let live another year or two and see how he can really mature. I think we can Give that it. guy two more years and you'll be after him. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the turning point in their age. From there on, they start getting real impressive. Next year, it'll be 20% bigger and 80% smarter. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is mule deer country extraordinaire. Oh, there's the buck right there. There's the buck. He says, dang, that's a nice looking truck. I wanted to have a better look at that truck. You'll like this draw. <laughs> I already do. <laughs> I really like this heated blind. <laughs> During the course of this week, you know, Daryl and I had the chance to look over a lot of deer. Women and children, no big daddy. I love the way they run. They just float. A lot of our bigger deer were not moving yet. We were able to see some, some better bucks and, and look over the country and, and passed on some respectable deer. Wow. Son of a gun. That's the biggest two point I've ever seen in my life. He's almost worth mounting. <laughs> kind of what you come mule deer hunting for. I've never seen one like that, Lenny. No, I've mean, seen a lot of mule deer bucks in my 50, 10 years, years of tenure, but never one like that. Hey, it'd be cool on your wall. Don't make many of them like that. No. Well, you still must have a little spoke in him. He's got a couple of girlfriends. <laughs> That's what you call old man got it going for him. This is worth the whole trip right there. Jeez. That's about as classic as it gets right there. Yeah. One of the neat things about the, this particular area and the, and the country that we're hunting is it also brings in a lot of history. This ranch sits right in the heart of, of what Lewis and Clark noted to be some of their favorite territory on their trip through the West. And it's pretty unique to do some background and, and read about this particular area as they saw it. Although they had already sighted the shining peaks of the Rocky Mountains, as Lewis and Clark's Corps of Discovery passed through the Missouri Breaks 200 years ago, Meriwether Lewis wrote of handsome, well-timbered river bottoms and hills and river cliffs that exhibit a most romantic appearance. White rock walls that looked, he said, as if nature had attempted here to rival the human art of masonry. To Lewis, it seemed as if those scenes of visionary enchantment would never have an end. On the beautiful plains, they found great quantities of buffalo, along with antelope, sheep, and whitetails. But the mule deer, they rarely found in any except a rough country. I like the glass right down here in this little draw. That's usually a few deer that like to hang out down there. Yep. Sure. Oh my! What? <laughs> no. a, was that an? Was that an? Oh my! There's a big buck laying down up there. Yeah. Really? Oh, I see him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my! Nice and tall. That is a nice buck. Finny. Yeah. Big, tall chocolate horns. That's the buck we're looking for. Oh, Vinny, I think I'm going to get real excited now. Yeah, that's that six-year-old type deer, you know, that we're looking for. It'll be. Oh, he's content. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, well, I think we need to Let's slip on down there and we'll get on him and get up on top of the hill and see what he looks like. I'm looking forward to seeing Okay, okay. Should be fun. Okay, let's do it. We'll get up. This is going to be cool. Yeah, perfect. Daryl Wise and Guy Vinny Delgado of the Montana Hunt and Fish Company have a mule deer spotted in classic Missouri Breaks habitat. He just looked so good uh, laying up there. He looked tall. He was past his ears. He was the desirable chocolate horn model. Vinny worked us around completely out of the deer's line of sight. I think we'll just move up to that, that one little bush there. 
We'll get on our so belly. Yeah, take a crack at it. Moving slow. Yeah. He was in an embankment, a typical classic mule deer bed where they they dig out the side of the, the ground and, and bed under a, a big green juniper bush. Okay. He's still in the same spot. Closer from, from right up here. We'll have you just get in front of me. And I'll slide in behind you and get you a range. One of the neatest things about a good stock is the complete element of surprise. They're not expecting you, you're not blowing them out, you've got time to calm down. And in this case, the deer is lying down. Okay, Daryl, let's just wait till he stands up. Look through the scope and emotions just pegged the needle, it was a high. Looks like he's... He's looking this way, but... Yeah. How far did you say it was? 380? 380. We couldn't get any closer. Longer shot than is comfortable for a lot of folks, but it was take it or leave it. I couldn't let that deer go. Are you nice and steady? Yeah. Okay. Just another day in the office. Just another target. Dum, 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 dum. Raised the blood pressure. It was, it was what, you know, an old mule deer hunter looks for. Okay. All right, here he is, he's getting up. Ready? Yep. Ready? Yep, take him. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Great Vinny. Great shot, Daryl. <laughs> you ever see Santa Claus cry, man? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. That was something that, that'll stay in my mind for a long time. I love the stock. Yeah. To me, yeah. That's everything. The kill is almost anticlimactic, but when you get one like that, that's the real deal, dude. You never knew we were even here. Let's go look at this bad Definitely. boy. Definitely. I want to see him. I want to get my hands on those horns. Good looking buck. I'd say he's about a seven year old deer, wouldn't you? I would, yeah. yeah Six, seven, just in his prime. He's in his prime. Yeah. I love his face. Just the classic, way mature, old mule deer buck. I tell you what, I've been hunting mule deer for over 50 years, and I couldn't say no to that buck. He, he's, he's a solid, good looking mule deer buck, and I'm proud to have him. Is that what we had in mind? That's what we were looking for, sir. On trails blazed by explorers of yore, he's found mule deer and mule deer hunting the way they were in years gone by. And with continuing management and selective hunting, this is the way they'll be for years to come.